Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. It has to do with the Sky Zone, the inbuilt head tracker, a gimbal, and kind of how to set this thing up. So it's pretty interesting. I really wanted to try it for the first time ever because previously I've never had head tracking. So and now I have a bunch of gimbals that I really want to get this working. So I thought it would be pretty interesting to share this because there isn't really much online about this here and luckily it's a pretty simple process to do however there's some things you might need a little bit of experience before getting a really nice result here now the first thing you will need obviously is a gimbal or servos for this video we're doing a gimbal so these are taro gimbals which are really nice uh, this is the second one i've gotten i'll have a video on this very soon um this one takes a gopro session however this one will not really allow you to see what you're recording so you'll be recording blind uh especially if you have a gopro uh session set up because unless it's a gopro session 4 that's a different story but a 5 you will be flying blind. However, there's another gimbal for the GoPro Hero, uh, which will allow you to see what you're recording and which is what I've added on my Zod Dart XL. If you've seen that previous video, just Google or YouTube Zod Dart XL gimbal. So that was a really fun and very interesting experience, but I was using the controller uh, to move right and left. However, now I could use my head with the all new Sky Zones. So let's get into this so there's two of them the configuration to both are exactly the same whether you use the version for the gopro session or the gopro hero uh exactly identical all the hardware the only thing that's different is the mounting solution so keep that in mind all right so the reason why i have it like this is to be able to show you how everything works so right now what i'm going to do is just plug it in and it's very important the way that this turns on so it has to be in a specific way for it to work good or else it'll turn on go to a location and then just kill itself and then it'll do that again and it'll just you know cut off the power uh it does that in order to protect the brushless motors here that's a safety function in order to protect the gimbal motors so you don't burn the windings since they are kind of expensive so right now i plugged in the power as you can tell it is on so if i move this it'll stay in position currently uh, i'll have the camera facing us in a little bit all right so right now it is booted and um as you can tell well i mean i shouldn't do that but it is booted. If I move it, there's a lot of things connected here. So let's take a look at what I've done. Now, what's really nice about this is it can take S bus or PWM. And what I'm using is S bus. Now, this is the tricky part. If you're going to be using S bus, if you're going to be using one receiver, then you're going to have to split the line. One will go to the gimbal and one will go to the flight controller. And now you'll be like, well, how does that work? And you can set up the channels which this gimbal responds to on SBUS, which is really nice. And they do provide you with the USB connector and the program as well. And I'll show you how that looks in the program, how I've set this up. So currently, I think I've set this up to channel seven and eight. However, on SBUS, you can uh, use three channels, one for the mode, which is really nice. And one for the tilt and one for the, uh, I think, pan, pan and tilt. Yeah, pan and tilt. So that's really nice in that perspective. If you use PWM, you can only use two, pan and tilt. There's no mode button. And there's a bunch of other settings that you can change with this. So now this thing is booted up. How are we going to control this with our goggle now? Yes, with our goggle, moving our head right and left. How are we going to control this? Well, first things first, you need to find your head tracker port here. And in any goggle that has head tracking, uh, most likely you'll have a menu that it'll allow you to choose what channels you want to output. So I've outputted channels seven and eight here. And it doesn't matter, you know, let's just say you're using channels seven and eight for something else. You could still keep this channel seven and eight, that's totally fine, or one and two. And in your transmitter, you would just uh, change it into the mixer. So right now, this is taking three, three channels. It's going to take channel seven, eight, and I think I put five. Now, channel seven and eight are going to be for the pan and tilt, which we're going to do with the goggle itself. And the third channel, which is channel five, that's going to be for the modes. However, we're not going to take a look at that right now. If you ever get your own, you can play around with that and you'll figure it out. It's not that important here. So what I've done here, if we take a close, which is really difficult to show you anything, really. Um, as you can tell, here's my SBUS receiver, which is bound. I have five volt and the gimbal is actually outputting five volts into the receiver and taking the SBUS signal. And at the same time, it's all being powered up from a 4S. So I'm doing everything through one 4S LiPo. It does have a five volt in there that's powering up the receiver. And let's go ahead and bring in our controller now. 
So as you can tell, as soon as the controller booted up here, we have this looking in a way, in a direction. This is the default direction that channels seven and eight are actually being broadcasted. However, we still don't even have our goggle connected here. So what I'm gonna do next now is I'm gonna get my trainer port and I'm gonna plug that in right here. It says track out on the sky zones. And this is the reason why I'm actually really liking these goggles. They have really good picture and they just work really nice. I really like the OSD also inside. So I've gone ahead and plugged in the head tracker and now that will go into the back of my Horus. Now, you know, the QX7 does also have a head tracker area and ju you just have to just read the documentation that'll tell you where it goes. However, on the Horus X10, there's a little issue. I don't know if it's a shitty design from FR Sky, but I have to pull this back slightly here for it to actually connect for some reason. All right, so that's all connected and let's go into our mixers. So this is the same way for any other uh, transmitter, uh, FR Sky transmitter, OpenTX transmitter to be exact. So currently what you see here is we have channel 7 and 8 and it's saying T, it's, it's routed to TR8 and TR7 and um, that means trainer port. So that, that's all I had to do, I had to come here and just choose 7 and 8 and these numbers TR8 and 7, where do I got these from? It's whatever you've set your goggle to output. I put mine to output on channel 7 and 8. So if it sees PPM channel 7 and 8 coming in from the trainer port, I want them to be routed to channel 7 and 8 on the uh, S bus uh, because that's how we program the gimbal to read. So the gimbal will read channel 7 and 8 uh, from the S bus. We could, have, we could change that to channel 12 and 13 and all we gotta do is just go down here and 12 and 13, we just change it to TRA and TR7, whatever you want. Now we have the goggle plugged in. Let's go ahead and turn on the goggle. So when you turn this on, you have to get it as straight as possible, like how you want to be looking in order for it to be kind of calibrated. All right, so now I'm going to boot it up with this button right here. And hopefully we should get something. Okay, so that's booted. Okay, I'm just going to wait for it. I might have to play with the wire. Is it moving? No, it's still not moving. So I have to play oh, slightly with the wire that's in back of the horse because it's a really shitty design. There we go. See what I mean? So this issue is well known for a lot of Horus X10 users about the port in the back. So as you can tell, now it's working. For example, I'm looking left, I'm looking right, even though it's not really looking like that because of the way everything is mounted currently. But um, yeah, there we go. It looks like it's tilting more than turning. Uh, because obviously the way that it's uh, set up right here. So there we go. Well, you can just do that right there. So now it's looking right and left. And if it's looking the wrong way, you could either invert it inside your uh, transmitter or you could even invert it inside the sky zone. They give you a lot of uh, functionality and a lot of things to use in this, which is really nice. And um, I, I really do like it. It's a proper, proper package. This is not even an entry level goggle. This is a full fledged budget professional goggle. And um, it's, it's, it's a really nice and pleasant thing to work with. The button arrangement isn't the best, but that's something that's totally fine in my opinion. I, I could care less about that. And if you ever wanted to use external modules, like for example, if you wanted to 2.4 gigahertz, then what you can always do is, oh, the gimbal's just gonna go crazy now. What you, can, what you can do is, it has an AV input, so you can get yourself like a Dock King. Yes, it's gonna be more expensive. You get yourself a Dock King, plug it in, and you're, be, you're gonna be using external modules that way. And what's really nice, you can also use servos with this. So you can just put a really small camera up there with a couple tiny servos, 3D print something, and uh, you can actually start looking around while you're flying, which is really cool, especially for recovery missions. Now, let's take a closer look at the gimbal itself, how I wired everything here. All right, so this is the main controller board for the uh, gimbal itself here. And everything will be connected to this. So you have your power, as you can tell right here. So these are the power, and those are connected to a battery over there. So we also do have this cable that's connected here, which is also the USB in order to configure the gimbal itself. And if we take a closer look, we have three servo type connectors here. Now what you can do is use P two PWM inputs. Okay, one of these is video. I think it's this one. This one's, no, this one's not video. This one's video. So this is video and ground. There's a way to route video through this, but I still haven't figured it out and they don't give you the proper cable for that. So there's a way to route video through this whole gimbal so you don't have wires sticking out, which I still don't know how to do. And you have two uh, servo type connectors. One will be 
uh, uh, SBUS and the other one will be uh, PWM. So you can use the SBUS one as PWM or SBUS and then the other one also as PWM. But when you use PWM, you lose functionality. You need three channels or it's better to have three channels because you can choose the mode and you can you do your pan and tilt. Now, the tricky part is connecting the SBUS. Now, if you're gonna have an operator to operate the camera, what you can do is bring another controller and another SBUS receiver and plug it in. And if you don't want to do that and you wanted to fly everything yourself with the same controller, so what you would want to do is you would take your SBUS signal, so this is it right here, and then you just have it go two ways. One will go into the SBUS signal of the gimbal and the other one will go into your flight controller. And then that way you can control everything, which is really nice. However, FR Sky has some really cool receivers that will output uh, PWM and SBUS with like four just PWM channels. I think they're called like the RX 4R or something. I'll have some link down below. Those are useful for a lot of things. Maybe not drone pilots, but if you, I mean some drone pilots, not the FPV racing pilots, but some type of a large drone or a large airplane or some other things as well. So those can be pretty useful and I have two of them. The range is pretty good as well. I've tested them. So I think this is the part that would probably lose a lot of people, which is the SBUS. Since you're like, okay, wait, well I have to give SBUS to something. Is it going to be my flight controller or gimbal? but you can route the wire and then the SBUS signal will be read into this and it'll know what you programmed it. You could tell it channels, just read channels 13, 14, 15 and it'll just read those from the SBUS signal, ignore everything else uh, and the flight controller will take the channels 1 through 12 or whatever. It's totally programmable which is really nice and it adds a lot of flexibility. The learning curve isn't that difficult. I think if you, if you have some knowledge uh, I think it'll get you like maybe two hours to get you running possibly. Uh, just, you know, you'll keep messing around with it until you get it just right. But overall, this is a really great gimbal. I've used its bigger brother version. I mean, it's the same one, but the other one just carries a GoPro Hero type. And uh, this is the GoPro Session, uh, which at the time of getting it, I did not know that the GoPro Session 5 does not have an analog video output, which is a huge bummer. But it might be useful for something since it's really light. Maybe we can just have it be in a static position or something and then put it on an RC car. I've done that already, but I lost the footage. It was really fun, but in a different one than this one. It was one that has a pre-built battery inside, uh, but you can't control that one. But yeah, this one has totally controllable, lighter and uh, just more flexible. All right, guys, so here's just kind of just an intro into head tracking. Uh, I'll probably be making a more dedicated video later on once I have this set up on an airplane. I'm trying to figure out which airplane or finishing building my large a uh, hexacopter for a camera setup to test gimbals and cameras and stuff on. So I'm still debating on which route I should go, but however, recently I've been slightly busy and um, just family matters I've been handling. M many of you probably already know this, but yeah, currently I'm just in a, in a little pickle right now. But once that clears out, then uh, everything will be back on track with the hexacopter and everything. So I'll have a link to everything down below. If you want to go ahead and check those out, those greatly support the channel. Yeah, overall, they're really great components. I have nothing to complain about. Um, I've crashed with one of these gimbals. It was fine, and uh, which is really great. So it's not super fragile, so you can expect it to last somewhat. And Tero is a really good brand. Uh, for these for this type of things. I mean they, they make a lot of things and if it wasn't such a good brand They still wouldn't be making these These have been out for a while. So and the price is kind of dropping slightly and um, Yeah, and sky zone goggles are really really awesome. I am Really impressed with these really impressed. I'd highly recommend them for anyone. I'm willing to put my Reputation on the line. That's how good they are and well, that's it guys I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll have a link to everything down below and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out guys